Well, when I went, the last time I went to a specialist, I had a specialist, like, he became my best friend. <laughs> I was seeing him every six months. And every time I would go there, he would say, you're losing your eyesight. You have to make decision what you want to do. At that time, cataract surgery was just in infancy. It wasn't like now you are in and you're out. Um, so it was scary because there is no guarantee and both of my eyes need to be fixed. But I made a decision that I'm gonna operate my left eye first because I had only 5% and if that doesn't work, at least I would have 10% in right one. I did left one and it went well and I thought, okay, I have to do the other one. So a month after, I did both of my eyes. In meantime, I wore patches. I couldn't work. Patches are on both of eyes. And uh, when everything was done, it was four o'clock in the morning and was kind of springtime, I took the patches off and for the first time I saw buildings and I saw my kids and my grandkids. And um, yeah, I woke up everybody at four o'clock and start screaming. I could see, I could see people say, what's wrong with you? So yeah, you have to have thick skin, okay? I'm rejected, accept that. It's nothing to do with you or me. It's to do with that person. Maybe him or her had a bad morning and you are there. So you ask question and he brushed you off. I've been brushed off so many times, but you have to go back and find people who are going to accept you, who are gonna say, no, you're great. And those people do exist in every culture. But still, if you are scared and you stay in your own culture, it's not gonna help you much. You have to venture out. Yes, celebrate what you have, your music, your food, whatever. Dancing, great. We live in multicultural society. But have friends all over. That's learning. So I know that. I invented that I will do it tomorrow. So I've been there, done that. It's a fear. When you're postponing decisions about your life, you actually live in fear. What's out there? fear of unknown, fear of rejection. Am I gonna pronounce this and somebody's gonna laugh? That's what immigrants are struggling with. Rejection, rejection from English speaking, speaking people who are born here. We don't have their language skills. We perhaps never will. I'm still struggling with English, but we have something that perhaps others don't have. We have that drive, we're going to make it. But the language, the new country, am I going to be accepted? That's always in the back of our mind. But that's a fear, fear of unknown, fear of rejection. For every person that rejects us, you, me, or George, there is five that will help us. But once we are rejected, we don't go there because we are scared we're gonna be rejected again. And I did it. Till one day I say, okay, she rejected me, but there is three people who helped me. Balance. Extremely in these busy times when everybody is running after that dollar, I think if you work 10, 12, 14 hours, you wanna to go to home, organize home. You want to go to your sanctuary. You want to be surrounded with beautiful stuff rather than just clutter. But we also live in society where consumers are very important, like everybody is buying. Everybody is buying because I believe that they're avoiding something, that they have that void inside of them. So they want to supplement, they want to make themselves feel better. So I will go for that black dress or I will go for those designer glasses and so on and so on. I think that we are actually buying to feel better, same as we are buying pills to feel better. And 
doesn't matter how much money you have, what kind of furniture you have, if you're suffering inside, if you haven't dealt what's inside, the furniture or whatever you have is not going to help, I think. <laughs> Trust me, when I had 12 years ago, uh, I was taking Toastmasters. Toastmasters is for public speaking. And I finished my 10 courses that qualify me to be a public speaker. I think I finished my courses maybe Tuesday and following Monday I had a high school that hired me to speak to their teachers. I had 60 people in the morning and 80 people in the afternoon in one room. But I was driving from Delta to Surrey and I say, please God, let me die. I can't do this. I can't speak. Once I got there, I was fine. So whatever, whoever is responsible for that, I thank him. <laughs> yeah, but I was terrified of public speaking and everybody else is. There is not one person, they lying. If they tell you that, but today, these days, yeah, I'm looking forward to being on stage. My plan, uh, immediate plan, is, and I'm still doing it, I started already, doing workshops on procrastination. And the book is, what's the price of your procrastination? And it's based on my book. I want to take every person that's in my audience to the next level, because I talk myself to the next level. I want to help people to feel good about themselves on whatever level they are. I want to push them to go further, to go up to recognize that they have gift, gift from God or whatever. Canada home, a peaceful home, a home where I could be whatever I wanna be, whatever I choose, I'm supported. Nobody ever rejected me because I wore thick glasses or I didn't speak language or whatever. It was always support there. My if you ask me what would be my message to my fellow immigrant would be this, you try first, embrace this country with all your heart and you're going to get 100% back. That's what Canadians want, they want us to embrace the, this country and yeah, I did it.